Thank you all for coming. My name is Brian Proppett. I am a senior manager of the community outreach team at the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. And part of my responsibilities are um, doing outreach, which involves events, it involves writing, it involves social media. Um, and so that's part of why I'm here today. I'm also in uh, Brian Proffitt, Vice President of Conferences and also Vice President of Marketing and Publicity at the Apache Software Foundation. And that is another part of why I'm here today. And finally, I am uh, Brian Proffitt, governing board, a governing board member of the uh, Chaos Project, a Linux Foundation-based project that is heavily involved in uh, using metrics and data analysis to measure community health. And that is another part of a reason why I'm here today. I'm also many other things. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a dog owner. I'm a member of a Scottish organization, but I'm not putting a picture of me in a kilt up there because I'm pretty sure that would violate somebody's code of conduct. So that is not why I'm here today. But those are things about me. <clears throat> Here's what we're actually going to talk about. Um, so we're going to talk about the problem of getting any kind of um, uh, return on investment from a community event. We'll define what a community event is. That'll take about two seconds. And then we'll also define what the return on investments is actually about, because we're not really talking about money here. Um, we're talking about spending money, but definitely not talking about getting money. Um, we'll talk about how, what are those challenges, why it is difficult to get any kind of return on investment from um, any kind of community event. We'll also talk about how to address those challenges. And you're not going to be able to ever really do it in a direct manner, so you kind of have to come at it sideways. Um, and then how do you maximize the benefits of being in a community event? <clears throat> so those are the three main topics. Hopefully we'll have some time for some good discussion because this is a work in progress. I'm going to share with you ideas that we have at Red Hat, but are also heavily influenced by my work at Apache. It's also heavily influenced by the data analysis work that I do in Project Chaos. So this is my perspective, but we're going to be hopefully have time to hear your perspective on these same problems and maybe new problems that I haven't mentioned. All right, so step one. What are the challenges of measuring community events? So when I'm talking about a community event, I'm talking about here. FOSS Backstage is one example of a community event. Scale in Los Angeles, another community event. Berlin Buzzwords, here, back here um, in Berlin, another community event. <clears throat> Even larger ones like um, Community Over Code, which we do at a, that's the, the Apache flagship events. Um, Open Source Summit, which is the Linux Foundation's really big event. Um, as large as that is, that is defined as, you know, can be defined as a community event. Where you're out there and you're meeting your community and you're interacting with them, but you're not really going to be like directly selling anything because um, for a lot of companies, especially in the tech world, some events are there to meet with customers or find new customers. And I'm looking at the sponsors and partners here on this you know, board. Mercedes is not going to be selling you any cars here. Okay, I'm not going to be selling you any software here. I mean, I wouldn't even at an actual event because I, I'm not a salesperson. That's a big mistake. Um, you know, and so on and so forth. We are here to interact with the communities in different ways, but we all have to kind of, especially in these days of uh, a slightly depressed economy, we have to be careful about what we, are, what we are doing and how we are doing it. Gone are the days where we could go out and you know, spend money um, willy-nilly and go to pretty much any event we wanted to. Those days are past, and so we have to really address you know, engaging with the community at these events and figuring out what you all get um, from us and we can kind of get from you. All right, so the problem is this. 
Community events, unlike what I would refer to as an industry com commercial event, it's really kind of tricky to get any kind of direct measurable impact. At an industry event, you're going to have basically what's called lead gen, which is when you, know, you go up to a booth and somebody has a machine or an app on their phone and they scan your badge and they have a conversation with you. And if that conversation with you is about anything customer or possibly sales related, we're going to jot that down. And that's going to go into a computer and that's going to come, you know, go to you know, somebody in sales or marketing and maybe you're going to get a specialized follow-up email from you know, us or Google or Amazon or any other company that's doing this. Okay, we're going to say, hey, we, you know, we're following up this conversation you had in the booth, you know, and, and hopefully that will lead to an actual sale. That is direct revenue. That is not what I'm talking about today. So, because nobody's really buying anything at a community event. If I go to scale, or if I come here, as I've already mentioned, I'm not selling you anything, because you're not here to buy anything. This, we're here to do open source community work. That's the thing that we're here to do, okay? But as a company like Red Hat, I want to be here, and we definitely want to be here, because we, we know we need to be out here and talking to you all and engaging with you all. For me personally, this is my office. I work remote at Red Hat. I've always worked remote at Red Hat. Um, even before pandemic, and you know, but my people, my colleagues, are here. Rich is here. Yarick is here. Taurus is here. I don't know the rest of you. You seem nice. <laughs> oh, Chris. Yeah, you're here. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're you're in there now too. But y'all are my colleagues. This is where I actually do my face to face. And Red Hat is willing to invest some of that, but not indefinitely and not for everything. So we have to kind of pick and choose. And the way that we're kind of doing this is figuring out, OK, what can we get? What, what can we get out as value out of a community event? Business is less prioritized, and ROI is determined. I mean, this is pretty much a straight line. There isn't really a great way to measure the return on investment that we spend, because somebody's paying my hotel bill, somebody's paying my airplane bill, you know, and my food, and that's Red Hat. If I'm representing Apache, they're paying my bill. You know, chaos is not paying for anything. You know, that's purely volunteer work. But, but of those things, somebody's paying for me to be here. Very rarely is it me. Okay, so I have to kind of be able to justify to my employer or to the organization that I'm volunteering for why. Am I here? What did I get out of it? And what do you, the organization, get out of it? OK, another layer of difficulty. Community events always involve multiple organizations. Right there. I, sorry, you can't see that on the camera, but y'all can go look at that on the website. Those organizations do not have similar goals. Some of us are going to be actually coming to a community event Maybe they're trying to drum up sales, especially the smaller startups. OK, this is their only opportunity to get any kind of face time with any potential customer. They're going to be there. The rest of us who've been around the while, no, we know that's not going to happen, or very little. So we don't really expect it. Um, customer, or I'm sorry, organizations are here to do community building. We're here to network. We're here to find employees. This was a big reason for Red Hat before you know, the economic crunch that we're currently in. You know, we're all out there. This is a great place to find people. You know? And that is an easier way to do uh, measurement. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. And there's also the ubiquitous brand awareness or thought leadership. You know, we wanted people to remember Red Hat's still engaged in the open source community. You know? We have smart people, no, not really, um, who work for us, who are talking about community and open source. And sincerely, all kidding aside, that's the part of the job that I love. You know, 
I am a firm believer in sharing all the knowledge that we can around what we have learned um, in our years in open source and hear that from you all too because I've been around forever, but I still don't know everything. And the good part of this job is you keep learning. <coughs> Excuse me. Community events also involve multiple projects. So it's not just corporations and companies and commercial entities. It's going to be uh, open source software, open source hardware projects. Um, when we ever figure it out, it'll be open source AI projects, whatever that means. But we still haven't defined that yet. Um, projects come with their own similar goals. Um, they're not looking for sales, but they might be looking for fundraising. You know, um, They could also be interested in community building, also looking at networking with other projects and definitely within their own communities. They use this as an opportunity. This might be the only time of year, like, maybe not this one. I haven't seen a, a community meeting here yet. Oh, no, I did, OSPO++ this morning. OSPO++ is trying to do community building here in Berlin, you know, and they're using this event as to sort of keep that going. Um, participant seeking. So they're looking for contributors. They're, um, they're looking for users. It's a little bit different than community building because community building is like, let's have a meeting around the people we already have. Participant seeking is more like bringing new people into the fold. And again, brand awareness and thought leadership. I'm sure Chris would love to tell us all about open search and how, you know, their impact on the search industry. That's cool. That's why they're here. You know, just gave you a plug. So five year old later, okay? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, but yeah, but seriously, that's what a project's going to do. And their goals, you know, not really different from a commercial entity. Okay, so I've outlined the problem. We have little ways, you know, few ways of actually measuring what's going on. If I go to a community event and I scan your badge, if I have a booth, you know, I'm, all I'm getting right now is head count. So X hundred people came by my booth and picked up stickers or a hat or a t-shirt or something like that. And that's fine because we're happy to give that stuff out. But that stuff costs money too. And sometimes somebody's going to say, yeah, but what did we get out of that? You know, and, and there'll be, this will be the situation maybe at your company too or your project. So it's like, okay, what can you get out of it? Let's walk through that and see what we get. So. The idea, this is pretty much the main central thesis of what I'm talking about today. If you don't have something that can be measured, make something that can be measured. This in first example is create collateral. And by collateral, that is a euphemism for written material or some kind of white paper that, you, that has a position on where you are in your particular ecosystem within the open source tech community. You can have um, landing pages that go to um, projects that you're really trying to drum up you know, contributors for. Excuse me. Or you know, you're looking for more users. OK, come use this. You know, um, not every community is contributor based. When I first came to Red Hat, I was the project or the community manager for Overt. Overt was a virtualization program. It was very complicated, so the bar to entry for a developer was huge. You know, so we kind of oriented around, okay, let's build a user community and start there, and then slowly through attrition, we would get more developers. You know, so. I'm going to get users to my community, or I'm going to be able to get contributors. This involves work, because now you've got you to put the work in. You've got to write this material. You've got to create onboarding processes, which my colleague uh, mentioned at the uh, previous talk. You've got to have onboarding ready to go so people can just you know, scan a QR code 
or however you want to give them, give them some swag with a, U, a URL on there and get them to come to your, um, your goal site. Other ways of doing this, and this is a, that, the collateral is a physical way of bringing people in. Either, you know, and by physical, electronic white paper or swag or, you know, a web page somewhere. It's a thing to bring people in. This is a little bit higher level. You want to create opportunities to bring people into whatever you want to bring them into. So again, onboarding, project goals. Maybe you want to increase um, Project X's um, contributor base by 5% in 2024. Okay, then be prepared so every event you go to, you bring swag and um, collateral and you know, you know, landing pages, whatever you need to do to get people to go for that goal and increase that by 5%. Now you've got something that's a measurable return on investment. And, and I'll talk about this in a bit. Don't just do that and say, okay, I'm done. You gotta keep measuring this and keep going. Um, discussion. Um, that is another way to participate. You know, invite people to come and ask, you know, say, what is it about my project that you like? The harder question, what is it about my project that you don't like? Okay, that is the best question you can ever ask anybody at one of these events. Because everybody loves to, you know, get the fan treatment. You know, I do. I'm a raging narcissist. No, not really. But yeah, tell me how good I am. Yeah, that's great. I don't want to hear how dumb I am. I get that at home. <laughs> so, but seriously, ask the hard question. What do you, what, what can we improve? Be honest and listen. Because when given the chance, people, they're not there to harass you, usually. Like you give them a chance and they'll say, oh, well, you know, I don't like this, but I didn't think anybody would care about it. Okay, we'll talk to them about it. Maybe you can fix it. Maybe it can't be fixed, but at least you've had an honest conversation with them. This goes into best practices. This goes into events and announcements. There's lots of ways you can, you know, do some things that can be measured later at an event. I want to make sure I get somebody to come to my event that I am hosting two months from now. Let's go. All right, so how do we do this? We maximize. The part that I mentioned before, you want to keep measuring all of this. You want to collect as much data as you can to understand what you're trying to do. So you're looking at who's coming to your booth or who's coming to your landing page, because landing pages make this a lot easier. There's no, not a lot of ambiguity there. Um, if you are measuring booth traffic, okay. Be more engaged with your lead gen app or whatever, you know, and say, this person was interested in this project. Sure, you're not gonna sell them anything. We're not trying to do that. But we know what they were talking about and what they wanted to know about. Visitor interest, what did they want to know about? A level of engagement, were they, were they really happy to see you? Were they not happy to see you? Why, you know, is this a trend? You know, Red Hat has made some slight faux pas lately in the open source <laughs> world, you know, and I will own that, right? But we gotta, we gotta hear that and be honest with that and come back with a genuine, sincere response to that, not, you know, PR fluff. Geography matters too. Where is this conference? Who are the people coming to the conference? You know, contributors in one part of the world have different goals than di contributors in another part of the world. They have different time frames. They, they're approaching open source in different ways. Keep that in mind. Also, you know, if you can, if you're holding landing pages with discussion groups, Keep an eye on the sentiment and the language analysis. You know, is the conversation getting heated? Why is it getting heated? Why did that person call that person the knucklehead? Thank you. You know, find out. You know, when we're all human, 
and we're all in some kind of room together, virtually or otherwise, pretty soon somebody's going to say something wrong. I guarantee I will, right? That happens. We're human. We make mistakes. We misunderstand each other. Keep an eye on this, and, and hopefully you can smooth those things out. Use that data to keep setting new goals. If people aren't interested in, like I said, X percent of more, you know, more contributors for your project, as one example, if that's not working, analyze the data, find out why. Maybe you just have, maybe at this conference, you just don't have developers. Maybe it's all users. It happens, you know. And, and this is any conference, not this one in particular. So maybe now, like, I'll pick on scale because that's my next one. Maybe scale is all, develop all developers, so I'm not going to get new users. OK, so next time I come back to scale, I'm going to do a developer-oriented message or have a developer-oriented goal. Build your collateral and documentation about that. Strengthen the areas that are weak. Set, you know, help with technical roadmaps. And then eventually, maybe, sort of, kind of, I almost put this in smaller type, but accessibility is a thing. Maybe you'll get some commercial leads down the road. That is not the main goal here. But if it comes along anyway, don't knock it either. You know, but that is not the primary goal here. So yeah, keep your data. You can use the data and inform your decisions first. It's like, where in the circle are you starting? At Red Hat, we are starting by setting goals first. Then we're going to use the data to analyze that. That's where the feedback loop starts. You want to gather data first and go that route? Sure. Whatever floats your boat, whatever works for you. It's all one big feedback circle at some point. Oh, am I done? I am done. All right. <laughs> Look at me being all efficient. So I guess we have time for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Not that guy. No. <laughs> so you, you mentioned that giving away swag and stickers costs money. Yeah. And you also mentioned that you want data. Have you done anything where you look at what swag goes first and what projects on the swag go first as a way of seeing which one's getting the most interest? Yeah, so we do do that. And that's, that's actually been something we've we at Red Hat have measured for a long time. Like, our, like so I, my relationship with events is I kind of do the meta planning, but the marketing team has an events team, and they are amazing human beings. Um, and I will buy them all the you know, dinners and lunches I can for them. They've been tracking this for years. So they know that Red Hat baseball caps do really well in the states where we all wear baseball caps. Not so much here in Europe, not so much in Asia. It varies. In Europe and Asia, everybody likes those summer weight Red Hat fedoras that we're actually not allowed to give away in the States, but that's another story. But we have that data. We know what's, what goes out. We know that battery, you know, cool little battery chargers, they go out faster. We have some flops. Um, a few years ago, before COVID, everybody was into fidget spinners. And we were like, oh, let's make some fidget spinners. There's a lot of fidget spinners sitting in the tower in Raleigh. OK, and every time I go in there and help the events people clear that closet out, do you want some fidget spinners? I said, no, all my children are over 22. Not happening. And you don't need to be, no, I don't need that. So, but yeah, so we do do that measurement. And that is an important thing to do. Fortunately, it's easy. It's stuff. Do you ever put uh, money, dollar values on some of the returns that you get? Like, uh, you know, you sign up 100 people to like a mailing list. Do you ever have like estimates as to, like, to, to help your management understand what the, because they think in terms of dollars. So short answer is no, because we haven't, we, this is a new approach for us too. All these years have gone by and we've, we have been, you know, we just were like, 
well, we got to go to scale. We got to go to Foss backstage because that's where the community is. And we had the, you know, we had the money and everything to do that. Not every, that's not true anymore. So that's the short answer. The longer answer is probably not. I would like to keep this conversation at Red Hat. This is my preference away from actual dollars. I want to be able to reflect value in the community-oriented goals that I mentioned here. And that was just a subset. We're actually thinking of them um, in OSPO now. And as we actually kind of land on some, the next version of this talk will have that. So I'm hoping not. Maybe down the road, somebody higher up than me might say, can we put a dollar value on that? And, you know, I might push back. So, yeah, but the plan is no. Thank you. Yeah. So this kind of, all right. Yeah. This kind of dovetails off of conversations that you and I had upstairs. The answer you just gave him and your talk, um, which is, at least at Ivan, like we're a mid-sized company. So we have to be very, very careful about where, where we spend our money and what we spend our money doing. Um, and I guess the question is, if you aren't attaching a dollar value to something, how are you justifying the existence of say, a community events program internally. Like, what's the argument you're using to say, this is why we should do this and why? Because that's what we're struggling with, at least on Ivan's DevRel team. Right. Um, that's actually a good question. So the reason why I'm resistant at Red Hat is, this is going to sound really arrogant, and I apologize. We can afford not to. I have come. When, I, when IBM bought us a, a few years ago, they, we had conversations with them. And Ospo talked to them. We were one of the few teams that could talk to them before the acquisition. And they would always talk to me. And they would say, well, hey, what's the return on investment on your open source project? And I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Because for them, open source was a choice. They could either do open source and see how much money they got out of it, or they could do it the proprietary way and figure out that money. They had a choice. I said, we don't do ROI because we are going to do it open source. That's the way we do it. You know? So I said, I'm not buying you know, Maseratis as swag. I mean, I'm watching my wallet a little bit, but I'm, we're not really measuring that. So for y'all and companies like you, you may have to do it. I'm kind of rethinking my, this answer here a little bit. You may have to, it's easy for me to sit back and say, I don't need to do dollar value. I just want to measure things in terms of community. If your organization is oriented that way, you can do that. If you need to see a dollar value, then I think that there is a case, especially with the chaos-based metrics, to eventually say, if I get X more contributors in a project, and I keep picking on this example, and to use your talk, non-code contributors count too, then you know, how much value is that in terms of volunteer work that is done versus if I had to pay somebody to do that? Now, we got to be careful there, because now we're going down the road of, well, if I use all these volunteers, then I don't have to hire employees. And that's a dangerous line too. This is where I get really squidgy with this. But I think if you're careful and apply, apply these values, it's like you said, it's a tightrope. You know, I think you could make the argument of extracting a dollar value. But I would be very, very, very careful, because I recognize it's necessary. But you don't want to outfox yourself and get in a situation where, well, we don't need to hire anybody. We've got all these great volunteers. That's rude. And it doesn't put bread on the table for a lot of people. So, yeah. Time for one more question. Quick question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brian.